On today's Fire Minute, we're going to go over a fire we recently had in National City. Uh, this is my helmet cam. We have Carl as the sounder, Luke on the saw. And while this is pretty much a bread and butter fire with a one story house, we um, had some talking points, some things to pass on. I'll go ahead and start this off on a, a lesson learned from me. I was trying to keep up with these guys and I wanted to get some good footage of them cutting a hole, frankly. And I should have done a 360 before I went up there because this is one of those fires where the uh, location of the seat of the fire wasn't totally obvious. Which segues into how you guys were able to find the highest, hottest spot. Yeah, so Carl and I have been partners for a couple years now. We have a pretty good routine. If he's leading us out, I'll usually be ticking behind him with the saw. But uh, I'll let him explain how we found that spot. Uh, so initially we kind of chose the Charlie Delta corner just because the production of smoke was a little bit more over there. Uh, once we got in that area, we sounded out a little bit, um, found a more spongy spot, and then we could see a little uh, smoke coming out between the shingles. Yeah, we try to always cut at the highest, hottest spot, obviously, but you could see that I try to leave myself about three feet from the peak of the roof. That way we're not cutting over a ha hallway until we get to that room of origin. So here you can see I'm starting to try to start the chainsaw, but what we had found out is afterwards we're doing the rehab is that the chain catcher had bent up, freezing the saw from spinning. So luckily we have a heads up engineer who brought the second saw to the base of the ladder. He was able to start that saw and hand it up to us. We went to the, uh, back to the roof, to the fire, and cut that second hole. So once Luke gets the second saw and he's ready to go, we decide to cut the second hole just to the right. Um, initially, after Luke cut the first hole, I could look down in the hole and uh, you could see fire to the right, so decided to cut over there. You can see here he's doing a good job of keeping the saw out of the smoke uh, to prevent the saw from getting choked out. You can see here with a change of color in the smoke, uh, they're getting water on the fire. Uh, and then you got engine 51 and engine 32 let us know that as soon as we open up that roof that they got a big change of conditions. That smoke and heat was able to lift up, visibility became a lot better, they took a lot less heat, so the uh, ventilation hole was very effective. Uh, when we were first walking out on the roof I was a little concerned with that lower area. Uh, I didn't know if it was a patio or an enclosed uh, structure, so I was able to uh, yell down to one of the firefighters in the backyard and get confirmation that that wasn't closed. He was also able to uh, indicate that we were over the fire. He could he could look into the house and see uh, where the fire was located. So that was a, a big help. Which also would have been really nice if the captain had actually done a 360, because then I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> you can see here when we Carl punched through the roofing material, it kind of broke up and. We just want to make sure that none of that stuff falls on our brother and sister firefighters below. So here you can see Carl and I actually picking the roofing material up, moving it from the hole so like I said it doesn't fall down inside. Afterwards we went up and looked at the holes and I was pretty impressed with how well those things lined up with the walls. And I asked Carl how he figured out where those walls were and what was your reply Carl? A little bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can see the top cut. Like I said, about three feet down from the pitch of the roof, we want to make sure that we're clearing the hallway. That was right beneath the wall. And then obviously those four by sixes, which is a little bit abnormal for a rafter, just making sure we clear those. Can't cut through those. If you cut through those, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and that about wraps up this week's Fire Minute. Thank you, Luke and Carl, for sharing. Definitely some good talking points. And, and reiterates that even though maybe, quote unquote, bread and butter, uh, there's always things that you can take away from it and always things that can help you grow. Hope you enjoyed. Group from Division 2, go ahead and cut that hole. Working on the hole. Division 2. Go for IT.